Hey everyone, it's Matt Heffner here, the assistant editor at On The Water, and welcome back to another week of Striper Migration Reports. The Striper Migration is right on schedule, if not even a little bit ahead of schedule this week. And it all starts down south in the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay's trophy stripe bass season remains open until May 15th, despite a very slow start for trophy stripers this season. A trophy stripe bass legally has to be over 35 inches. Now, while there are plenty of smaller fish around in the low 30s to high 20 inch range, there just haven't been a lot of those 35 plus inch fish inside the bay. Now, a lot of that is probably due to the early exit that some of those bigger bass have made, and those bass are already on their way up the coast. However, outside of the bay on Maryland's Atlantic facing beaches, there's plenty of action from schoolie stripe and bass in the low to mid 20 inch range. For trophy striped bass fishermen inside the bay, you've still got about four or five days remaining on that. And most of the fish that are being taken inside the bay have been taken on paddle tails or umbrella rigs being trolled along the shipping channel edges in the upper and middle bay. Now chunking is also a very popular tactic inside the Chesapeake Bay for those 35 plus inch stripers. However, if you do decide to do some chunking, you run the risk of catching some very large invasive blue catfish. So because some of those trophy sized striped bass have headed out of Chesapeake Bay a bit early this year, the fishing in southern New Jersey has taken off this week. We've gotten reports of large stripers hanging around the inlets of Barnegat Bay and the adjacent beaches, and that's due to those fish making that early exit out of Chesapeake Bay, as well as some of those fish coming out of Delaware Bay and making an immediate left-hand turn up the coast. According to Captain Brett Taylor, our Southern New Jersey Fishing Report author, there are fish from 26 to 46 inches hitting a variety of artificial and natural baits on the beach. Clams and Chunked Bunker have been two of the top producers for big bass in the surf this week. Although be aware if you are throwing clams in the surf or throwing the snot, as our friends at Grumpy's like to say, you risk the clams being picked up by a black drum. Black drum have been reported along the beach from Cape May as far north as Long Beach Island, so just beware if you're throwing clams in the surf, that's a big possibility that you'll be dealing with a drum instead of a cow striper. In the backwaters, anglers will find a lot smaller bass in the mid 20 inch range, hanging where they have been for the past few weeks, around those bridges and shadow lines, especially at night. Jigging small soft plastic paddle tails is probably the number one way to land bass at night in the backwaters. Meanwhile, out on the beaches, minnow plugs are catching bass and the occasional bluefish mixed in at night. If you are fishing inside the bays, be aware that soft plastics are far more likely to be shredded than they are out front. Further up the coast around Raritan Bay in New York City, bass to 50 inches and over were reported, and they're taking mostly live bunker and eels. Those big breeders are likely some of the trophy stripers that escaped the Chesapeake a bit early to narrowly avoid the trophy striper season down south. Up in Raritan Bay right now, live bunker is tough to beat. However, if you are an artificial aficionado, it's a bit of a tongue twister, try to say that five times fast, uh, flutter spoons are still responsible for catching many of the larger bass beneath those schools of bunker. And as larger bass continue to move up the coast out of Chesapeake Bay and Delaware Bay, the flutter spoon trend will continue. And it has for a lot of anglers even further north as bigger bass have pushed up into the Long Island Sound this week. We'll get to that in just a few minutes, though. Along the beaches of northern New Jersey, bunker chunks are catching for shore anglers, along with big metal lips from plug builders like Gary Soldati. And while the fishing out front might seem like it's died off a bit for anglers in northern New Jersey, it's mostly due to the increased presence of bluefish. Those gator blues are pretty much always going to beat larger bass to the offering, whether it's a bait sitting in the surf or a plug swimming frantically across the surface. On Long Island, South Shore surf casters are seeing a great chunking bite this week, and while chunking those oily bunker in the surf is the best bet, bass are also taking clams and bloodworms on the open beach. Bucktails and swimming plugs are responsible for some of the big back bay bass this week around Jay Bay and the Rockaways, Jay Bay being Jamaica Bay. But inside the bays, anglers will still find plenty of bass in and over the slot, only you might have to tangle with a few bluefish here and there. A bit further east, on the open beaches and in the back bays, bass are taking minnow plugs like SP minnows and Joe Bag Swarters. There's also been a sand eel bite developing around the central south side outside of Great South Bay. So grab some metals, some soft plastics, some bucktails and teasers and hit the sand. Further east, Montauk is seeing some good striper action on much of the same, including SP minnows and bucktails, and some of those larger overslot fish are hitting needlefish and darters. The Beconic Bay is also fishing well for slot-sized fish, but with weak fish and bluefish around, anglers who are jigging soft plastics might find themselves with a mixed bycatch. Now, just a little to the north on the North Shore, meaning the Long Island Sound side of Long Island, fishing has been pretty much excellent this week. Small bait fish like scup are moving into shallow waters and feeding the bass that are migrating through those areas as they push across the Long Island Sound. And while there are far fewer bluefish on the North Shore than the South Shore this time, that won't last long. Right now, night shift surf casters on the North Shore of Long Island are having the most success with gliders and minnow plugs. Meanwhile, anglers that are fishing out in the rips, especially during the daylight hours, are having the most success by three-weighing bucktails 
tossing top waters when the bass are on top, and dropping flutter spoons in those deep rips. As mentioned earlier, that flutter spoon trend continues in the Long Island Sound as herring move in and out of some of those tidal rivers in Connecticut. A big 9 to 11 inch spoon is perfect for imitating the large profile and swimming action of a full grown herring. Now when the bass are in a little bit more shallow waters, equally as effective will be throwing a large walk the dog style top water plug, something like the 24-7 lures mully or the uh, classic dock. Game on X walks will also work great and they'll throw a little bit of extra water, although that might actually end up calling in some of those bluefish that have been lingering around those rivers as well. And while big lures imitate herring down in Connecticut, large swimming plugs, gliders, top waters have all been responsible for imitating some of the large bait that we're seeing up in Rhode Island this week. Most of the forage in Rhode Island consists right now of bunker and squid. However, there are still a few herring coming in and out of those herring runs. If you're fishing the Rhode Island surf during the day, Top waters like the Game on X Walk have been phenomenal at calling those fish up to the surface, especially around the rocky shorelines. However, top water is not a number one producer at night. Subsurface gliders, needlefish, and large soft plastics like no live bait needed have been responsible for a lot of the bigger fish in the Rhode Island surf this week. That report came from our friends over at Saltwater Edge. There have been some bass pushing the 40 pound mark inside Narragansett Bay this week. And while it's super exciting to watch a 30 to 40 pound bass blow up on a top water plug, just be aware that around a lot of those bigger bait schools, you're going to be mixing in with bluefish again, or rather the bluefish will be mixing in with the bass. And just a little bit northeast of Rhode Island, Buzzards Bay and the waters around Cape Cod have seen some phenomenal striped bass fishing this week. We've seen fish from about 20 inches all the way up to about 40 pounds. Those larger fish have been hanging around outside the Cape Cod Canal, taking full advantage of the schools of mackerel, pogies, aka bunker, and squid pods that have been coming in and out with the tide. And after last week's full moon, we're seeing a good body of slot sized fish and over sitting in Cape Cod Bay on the east end of the canal. And big fish haven't only been focused on the pogey and mackerel schools this week. At least on Cape Cod, this is the best time of year to find big bass in very skinny water. We had a big worm hatch go on this past week, still going on as we speak, although it has died off quite a bit. And some of those worms are no more than two to three inches long. I personally didn't have any luck on the worm hatch, although I did catch some fish on a uh, rebel jumping minnow. It's surprising. They wouldn't take any cinder worm flies. They wouldn't take the casting egg in a fly, but then you get a rebel jumping across the surface really rapidly and uh, it was like an irritation strike. They were coming right after it. Still, most of those fish are schooly in slot size, but don't be surprised if you run into a 40-inch bass in the backwaters. As some of those larger bass that are currently in New Jersey and Long Island continue to push up the coast through the Long Island Sound and up into southern New England, they'll be gorging themselves on squid once they reach Buzzards Bay and Vineyard Sound. And it's safe to assume that also gorging on those squid will be big bluefish. Little tip, if you're a fly guy, definitely tie on some wire leader this time of year. On the north and south shores of Massachusetts and around Boston Harbor, there has been some stellar topwater fishing early in the morning when bass are chasing around schools of herring in the backwaters, which calls for some big topwater spooks. And the fun doesn't stop when those fish go down. Herring imitators like the Magic Swimmer, you just can't go wrong with. It matches the profile of herring so well, and that jointed swimming action is hard to beat as well. With all the bunker in the Cape Cod Canal and Buzzards Bay right now, one has to wonder if we're going to see the stellar fishing we saw outside of Plymouth last year where big bass up to 50 pounds were busting on bunker. There were whales within a couple hundred yards ashore. We're hoping for another summer just like that. But for now, anglers will have to enjoy the slot-sized fish that are currently inundating Boston waters and the schoolies that are mixed in with them. And speaking of schoolies, we got our first reports of fresh migratory fish on the coast of Maine this week. And while it's going to start off with really small little schoolies and what they call diaper stripers. It's great to see so much promise coming from the rest of the coast at this point in the season. We'll have more to come on the striper bite from Massachusetts to Maine next week. And if you haven't joined Striper Cup already, I recommend doing it now. It's an awesome way to win weekly prizes for just catching and releasing striped bass. That's all the time we have for this week. Get out there and go catch some fish. And thanks again for watching another Striper Migration Report from On the Water.